Welcome to ACE Online. Myself Krishna Reddy, Faculty of Electrical Engineering Branch. Subject is Power Systems. Today, let us try to analyze about SAG. So, what do you mean by a SAG? Okay. So, if you observe, whenever a flexible wire of uniform cross-sectional area is suspended between two supports, two supports at same level, it will experience the tensile stress. Okay. This will be weight uh, due to the weight of the conductor, it will be in downward direction. So, it will take what uh, form? It will take a catenary curve. Okay. So, what we are saying here, whenever you suspend a wire or a conductor between the two supports, so it will take a path of a catenary curve, it will take a catenary curve. So, what do you mean by a sag here? Okay. The same condition will uh, prevail in case of a transmission line. So, the difference in level between the points of support, so here we are providing the support. Okay. Here we are providing the support. Difference in level between the points of support and the lowest point on the conductor, this will be the lowest point on the conductor. Okay. This difference is known as what? Sag. This is known as what? Sag. Okay. So, the difference in level between the points of support and the lowest point on the conductor is known as what? Sag. Okay. Can we make the sag 0? No, because uh, if you make the sag 0, the conductor will experience more tensile stress and it may get breakdown. So, that is why permissible sag is to be allowed. Now, so how do you calculate the sag? So, when the conductors are at same support level, okay, uh, when they are at the same same level, then how do you calculate the sag? Sag S is equal to W L square by E I T. Sag S is equal to what? W L square by E I T. W is the weight of the conductor, L is the span length. Okay, here we have seen what do you mean by the span length. Okay, so span length and T is the tensile strength. Now, if when the supports are at unequal level, Okay. In the first case, we have seen when the supports are at equal level, here the supports are at equal level, SAG is calculated as what? W equal, S equal to WL square by IT. And uh, when supports are at unequal level, suppose if you observe a hill area like this, so here supports will be at unequal level, then you will get two different SAGs. So, okay, SAG will be different. So, how do you calculate the SAG S1? S1 uh, with respect to the first conductor that is W x1 square by 2t and uh, S2 is calculated as W x2 square by 2t. So, this is the condition or equations that are to be used to calculate the sag when the supports are at unequal level and when the supports are at equal level the sag will be same with respect to both the towers that is W L square by E I T. Now, what are the disadvantages of loose span? Whenever you are going for loose span, that means you are allowing more sag, what are the disadvantages? Let us observe. So, whenever the span is loose, the length of the wire required will be more or less, the length of the conductor required is for the given length. Uh, is more, the sag is also more. So, if you are allowing more span, that means uh, when the span is loose, suppose if you are taking a path like this. So, it takes more length, okay. So, the conductor required will be more, automatically weight required will be more. So, when the weight increases, automatically the sag increases, okay. And uh, if you are using the loose span, 
then it may result in clash during windy days and it will produce the short circuit. When due to wind effect, uh, the conductor may swing and it may result in what uh, short circuit, okay? That is one disadvantage. And loose pan will swing irregularly, okay? The swing that is produced by the loose pan will be irregular and vibrate and uh, there is a possibility of breaking of the conductor also, okay? So all these are what disadvantages of loose pan. First disadvantage is more length of the wire is required. So if the length of the wire required is more, weight will be more. If the weight is more, sag is more. And the other one is due to wind, uh, the conductors may swing and it may result in short circuit fault. And they swing irregularly and there is a possibility of what breaking of the conductor. These are the disadvantages of what loose pan. So what do you mean by safety factor? How do you calculate the safety factor? It is the ratio of ultimate strength to working stress, okay? Now, what are the factors that are affecting the sag in case of overhead line? So factors affecting the sag in case of overhead line. What are the factors that are affecting? First one, what is the sag relation that I have given? W L square by 80 if uh, the towers are at the same support level, okay? So that means sag is influenced by the weight of the conductor, okay? Sag is directly proportional to what? Uh, weight of the conductor. So now, as the sag increases with what? Weight of the conductor. Whenever the weight of the conductor is increased, automatically the sag gets increased. So whenever there is an ice formation taking place, and due to wind pressure also, the weight of the conductor gets increased. So which leads to whenever the weight of the conductor increases due to ice coating and uh, wind pressure on the conductor, then automatically sag increases, okay? Sag will get increased. Due to increase in weight, the sag, sag is directly proportional to what? Weight of the conductor. Whenever the weight increases, the sag gets increased. Now, the next one is what? S length of the span, length of the span. So what is the SAG equation? WL square by 80. So SAG is directly proportional to what? L square, okay? Length of the span. So SAG is directly proportional to span length. So with increase in span length, the weight of the conductor automatically gets increased. Yes or no? Suppose initially, if you consider this first case, this is the span length L1. If you increase the span length, suppose if you are going for increase in span length, uh, this is L2. So with increase in span length, the weight of the conductor, between the support increases or not? Yes, weight of the conductor increases, between the support increases, okay? Therefore, what happens? The higher value of span length, whenever you are going for larger span length, the sag will be higher. So if you are going for larger span length, what will be the sag? Automatically the sag gets increased, okay? So with uh, increase in weight, sag increases. With increase in length of the span, then also the sag increases. What about the working tensile strength? So SAG S is equal to what? WL square by 80. So SAG is inversely proportional to what? Tensile strength. SAG is inversely proportional to tensile strength of the conductor at constant temperature, okay? And what about the temperature? So it also depends on temperature. Because as temperature increases, the length of the conductor increases, so SAG also increases, okay? So these are the factors which are influencing what? The sag. One is weight of the conductor. Second one is length of the span. Third one is working tensile strength and temperature. Now, you may find these type of objective questions in the PSUs like SSEJE or GENCO, TRANSCO, RRBJE or whatever it may be. So the sag on the transmission line is least affected owing to what? So the sag is least affected. So 
first one is weight of conductor, second one is current to the conductor, atmospheric temperature, ice deposition on the conductor. So, SAC S is equal to WL square by 80. So, it is influenced by the weight of the conductor. So, first one is not the answer. So, there is now whenever the temperature changes, automatically it is getting affected because the length of the conductor gets changed. So, it is also not the answer. Ice deposition will increase the weight. So, it is also not the answer. So, which is the answer here? The current to the conductor, SAG is least affected to what? Current to the conductor. Now, let us observe these type of questions. In a transmission line, the SAG depends upon. So, SAG depends upon. SAG is depending upon what? SAG equation is what? WL square by 80. S is equal to WL square by 80. Now, uh, from this uh, equation, what we can say? SAG depends upon the span length, yes. Tension in the conductors, yes. Weight of the conductor per unit length, yes. So, answer is what? All the above, okay. It depends on all the values. Now, let us observe this question. The SAG in the transmission line conductor in summer is. So, in summer, the temperature will be more. So, as temperature increases, length increases, automatically the SAG gets increased. In summer, it is more than that of the winter. Okay, In summer, the SAG will be more when compared to what uh, winter. So, now let us see what do you mean by stringing chart. Stringing chart means what? Okay, So, let us observe this uh, analysis here. For erection of transmission line, if you want to erect a transmission line, the designer has to design the line so that it should withstand the worst conditions, okay, worst probable conditions. So, the designer must know the sag and tension that can be allowed in her overhead transmission line. How much sag should be allowed? How much tension is to be allowed in case of overhead line? That is to be known by the designer. So, here what does the stringing chart, uh, string chart shows? String chart is showing the variation of tension and sag with respect to what temperature very important string chart is a graph which shows the effect of temperature on sag and tension of the given transmission line under loading conditions it shows what the variation of sag and tension with respect to what temperature of the transmission line under loading conditions so now let us try to analyze what are the vibrations that are experienced by the conductor, effects and prevention of vibrations. So, we are stringing the conductor in the medium of what? Air. So, overhead line experiences vibrations uh, in a vertical plane, vibrations in a vertical plane. What are the vibrations uh, uh, different types here? There are two types, one is aeoline vibrations and other one is galloping, aeoline vibrations and galloping. Normal swinging will be allowed, no, normal swinging due to wind is allowed in case of what overhead transmission line, okay, because they are stringed, okay. Now, let us observe, what do you mean by aeoline vibrations here? They are also known as resonant vibrations, aeoline vibrations are also known as what? Resonant vibrations. This type of questions will be asked, aeoline vibrations are also known as, they are also known as what? Uh, resonant vibrations. What is the nature of these vibrations here? So, these vibrations are of high frequency and low amplitude, okay. The frequency is high, okay, high frequency and low amplitude. Loop length is what? 1 to 10 meters here, okay. What are the harmful effects? So, at the clamps supports uh, which may result in breaking of the conductor. And the other one is galloping. These galloping vibrations are also known as dancing vibrations, okay. So, these dancing vibrations are low frequency vibrations. They are not high frequency. They are what are galloping or low frequency vibrations, which occurs in conductors where there are sleet storms accompanied by strong winds, okay. They are due to what? Strong winds, we can say, okay. So, the amplitude of these vibrations is about how much? 6 meters. So, the conductor starts dancing. Here, the amplitude of these vibrations will be around 6 meters. Their frequency is low, okay. 
but uh, air line vibrations or resonant vibrations the frequency will be high but here the frequency is low okay so these are due to strong winds this may be due to strong winds so how to overcome this so the conductors follow what path elliptical pathways so the resonant vibrations uh, reach the conductors or the clamps or the supports and prevented by using the dampers here we are using the dampers dampers are being used to prevent them which of the following uh, reduced the stock bridge damper here i have shown the stock bridge damper so which of the following is reduced by the stock bridge damper on the power overhead transmission line so stock bridge damper reduces what sag conductor vibration line losses and mechanical tension so which one of the following is reduced by the stock bridge damper so it is reducing the vibration it is reducing the vibration okay these type of short questions will be asked in the psus okay so now what do you mean by sag template sag template means what okay so at the time of planning we require this at the time of planning sag template is necessary to decide the location of towers okay so a sag template is needed for what a location of the towers along the route of transmission line okay so it is prepared on the trace cloth or celluloid okay so tower height uh, particularly for conductor tower height and uh, calculating the sag every span on the straight line now if you observe this is the sag template this is a sag template that has been indicated here so now horizontal uh, horizontal and vertical lines represent what here horizontal and vertical distances indicate horizontal distance indicates the span indicates the span length and uh, sag respectively okay this vertical one indicates the sag horizontal one will indicate the span length okay there is also very important objective type question that can be asked in sag template uh, horizontal horizontal and vertical distances indicate what horizontal distances indicate the span length and vertical distances indicate the sag okay so here we have the upper curve l m and n l m and n it indicates what the upper curve l m n represents what uh, the conductor length in the span length of ln okay so the maximum sag is xm so this is a maximum sag this represents the maximum sag that is from x to m will represent the maximum sag of the span length uh, l to n okay if the span length is uv the maximum sag is what ym okay so if the span length is uv for a span length of uv the maximum sag that is allowed is what ym okay now you observe here you have the middle line this is opq now let us observe what does the opq indicates the middle line opq is below the upper curve lmn uniform vertical distance okay by uniform vertical distance which is equal to the desired minimum vertical clearance to ground so what does it show minimum vertical clearance to ground is indicated by that and what does this lower one indicates rst so rst indicates what uh, lower curve rst is below the top one by uniform vertical distance and it is equal to the height of standard tower measured to the point of support to the lowest conductor and indicates the tower footing line it indicates what uh, tower footing line okay so this is about the sag template so mainly uh, by using this sag template will be it is useful in location of towers while you are installing the transmission lines okay so now horizontal and vertical distance indicate what uh, span length and sag respectively here this is lmn is the span length uh, that is indicating what uh, represents the conductor length in the span length of ln and uh, here xm represents what maximum allowed sag in the path of lmn 
and y m represents the maximum sag in the path of u v. Okay. Now, where it is useful here? So, by using this, uh, if you know the location of left tower, okay, left side tower is known, right handed tower can be determined by adjusting the sag template. By adjusting the sag template, we can determine the right side uh, tower where we need to locate. Okay, that is the advantage of using this. Okay. So, these are the topics that I need to put uh, before you uh, from sag and vibrations that are going to take place uh, in case of overhead transmission line. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. I wish you all the best. Mechanical Engineering in ESC 2021. I have been associated with ACE Engineering. I have taken various programs like LIFE's main classes, Postal Study course, Test Series and Intro Guidance program. So I would like to thank all the faculties of ACE. It has helped me in building my concepts and having my fundamentals cleared. I would also like to highlight that in test series, uh, I have given various mock tests which have helped me in the time of real exam and in interview guidance program, building confidence in the in front of interview panel. It has helped me in my success. Myself, Abhishek Kumar Sharma. I have scored All India Rank 1 in UPSC Engineering Services Examination 2021 in Electrical Engineering Discipline. Now, I divide my preparation strategy into three basic things. The first thing is that you have to complete your syllabus from a basic standard source. The second thing is that you have to attempt previous year question. The third thing uh, as